Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today, I want to talk about soldering. Soldering is one of the essential skills for model railroading, no matter whether you're using DCC or DC power. You still need to get power to the track, and that often means soldering feeders, rail joiners, and all kinds of other uh, types of jobs that require making a bond between two wires or wires in your track. And soldering is probably the best way you can go about doing that for most uh, of these types of, of jobs. So today I want to go ahead and go over the various tools that I use for soldering and uh, the, the materials. And then in the follow-up video later in the week, I'll show you examples of how I go about doing some of these specific soldering jobs. So let's go ahead and get started. But first, once again, subscribe. Please hit that subscribe button. I really want to thank you guys. We're up uh, close to 700 subscribers now. So a lot of people have been joining lately and hopefully this thing will start to snowball and we'll be up over a thousand in no time. Uh, later in the video, there'll be another opportunity to click on the icon of me that will pop up here on the lower right hand side, my right hand, your left hand, and you that will lead you to a, a subscribe uh, button as well. So thanks a lot. Stick around and we'll get started in just a second. Here's an assortment of tools that I use on the Piedmont Southern. And the first and most important one, of course, is your soldering iron. And I can't tell you enough how important having a good quality soldering iron is. And that is one of the things that's very important, is to get a, a soldering iron with a tip that is uh, well grounded. Okay, this particular one, it's a Hakko, H-A-K-K-O uh, soldering iron. It has a very good tip to it. One of the reasons for having one that, that is well grounded is because um, you can destroy electronics if you're soldering using a tip that is leaking electrons through through it and through electronic components. So this is this is the soldering iron that I use 99% of the time now. Uh, it's adjustable. Uh, the handset comes. You can get a number of different replacement replacement tips for it. Uh, they come in different sizes. Uh, this one here is just this one that I already have as a backup, it's a pencil point. And I use this pencil point for most jobs. And then it has a variety of sizes of tips. This one is a very broad tip uh, that would be very useful for doing uh, jobs requiring a lot of heat. And that's one thing I want to point out. Now, I have an array of these. All of them, they are flat tip, soldering iron uh, tips. Uh, much like a, a regular flat tip screwdriver. And um, they're just different widths that I have purchased. I haven't used them at all since I bought this about a year ago, mainly because this does most of the most of what I need to. Uh, but let me let me point one thing out about these pencil point soldering tips. They only apply heat at the tip, pretty much, for what you're doing. And as a result, it can take a little bit longer if you're using a fine tip than it can if you're using one of these broad tip um, soldering iron tips. So that's something you have to consider is the size of the tip for the size of the job that you're working on. And I'll go a little bit more on that uh, in the next video. Okay, the other thing that came with this is the stand. And it's good to have a stand. You don't want this thing laying on your bench and uh, melting your wires and, and starting little fires and all things like that. So basically this is very nice. It has this tip. It also has this built-in uh, cleaning uh, station. And it has two different kinds. This right here is a piece of sponge. It's removable. Okay. And the idea is you wet this uh, with just plain old tap water. And then in between uh, soldering, you can simply rub your hot tip across the wet sponge and it will remove excess solder and contaminants. So it allows you to keep your tip clean. Now the other thing is this piece of brass wire turnings. Okay, and here's a similar one. 
All you have to do with this is push your tip in and give it a little twist and it will remove all of the contaminants and excess solder from the tip whenever you do that. Um, and it came with this and it's got a little, you know, built-in spot for it right here. And so I, I love these. I found this, I originally found this one on uh, allelectronics.com. And all it is, is this holder that's weighted and this thing that looks like a Brillo pad. And it's made out of brass shavings. And you just go like that and it will clean your tip for you. I like this um, brass wire version much better than the old uh, wet sponge method. And I rarely use the wet sponge anymore. This is uh, so much more effective and uh, efficient at removing it. And you don't have to mess with keeping the sponge wet. Okay, so let me move those two things out of the way. Um, let me talk about solder because that is something that is very important. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of solder floating around these days. This one here is some a spool. It was originally a one pound spool and it is a 60-40. So it's 60% tin, 40% lead. Okay, and this is the the most common formulation that was used for many years for a lot of work. This one has uh, flux in it, and I'll talk about flux in a second. Um, but it all it, it it really is a nice uh, solder to work with. It flows well. The problem with it is it is has a a dual melting point. Uh, it starts melting at around 361 degrees Fahrenheit. But that melting point can also go up to like 460, I believe, it, uh, is the high point. Um, and that's a problem with, with this type of soldering, of solder, is if you've got this wide range over which it can go from a solid to a liquid, then it exists in between as a paste, okay? And typically, uh, you'll see that on the 6040 as a, a very bad issue because as you're allowing the solder to cool on the piece of work that you've just soldered together, it's going to exist in that semi-crystalline paste form between a liquid and a solid as the work cools off. The net result is if you move the uh, solder joint at all during the point where it is cooling, it will come out sort of a dull finish. And it just doesn't make a very good bond with the uh, copper in, in the wire or the steel, whatever you're soldering to, it doesn't make a good bond. And that is a disadvantage of using the 6040. The other type that's very common is uh, 6337. This one here is about uh, 6335 and 2% silver. So it's a silver bearing uh, wire uh, solder. It's made by Kester. And, um, the good thing about these uh, other types of formulations, particularly very common 6337 as opposed to 6040, is they have one definite melting point, 361 degrees Fahrenheit. So it will, autom it will go quickly from a solid to a liquid and the reverse. It will go back liquid to solid quickly. So it's not as susceptible to being moved while it's changing uh, phase. Now, let me point out, if you do use 6040 and you do end up with a cold solder joint, all you have to do is reheat it and then let it cool again without moving it. And that way it will go ahead and solidify properly. And you won't have the problem of the uh, joint breaking at a later date or have a poor electrical connection. So keep an eye on that if you're using good old 6040. But I now recommend going with something like 6337 or one of these other types of formulations. Now, a lot of people are using a lead-free solder these days. It's required in the United States uh, for all drinking water supplies uh, that uh, a non-lead solder be used. I find it difficult to work with. I have used it for soldering pipes in my house and it takes a little bit of getting used to and so I never have uh, started using it with my uh, with my model railroading uh, materials. Okay, some of the other things that I have here 
it's a, a tip cleaner. And it's difficult to open. It's a little metal tin. Okay, and what is in here is a mixture of flux and powdered solder. And what you do with that is, to clean your tip, you take a hot soldering iron and you plunge it into it. I, I, it's not hot, so I can't show you that. But what that does is the flux mixes with the oxides on the tip that have formed and removes those, and it retins the tip. Now, tinning is the process of actually getting solder to melt onto the tip of the soldering iron and the pieces of metal that you're going to solder together. And what that does then is it makes it the project or the, the process of soldering go much quicker because you've got the two pieces already have solder on them. All you have to do is reheat them to the point where the solder melts and then quickly join them together. So that's the process of tinning. And I will show you that um, in the second video that I do on how to do this type of stuff. But basically, uh, this tenor cleaner material here uh, is very inexpensive, and you can pick it up off of uh, eBay or Amazon.com, any of those companies. Um, I think I got this one from engineering.com. So that's basically one thing you'll want to do is pick yourself up some tip cleaner. Now, let's talk about fluxes. There's acidic and non-acidic fluxes. The acidic fluxes, if you've got something that has zinc chloride in it, don't use it. That is an acidic flux. If you use it on anything elect electronic, it's going to corrode your wires and cause your joint to fail eventually. Uh, it can even damage the components that you're working with. So never use anything that is an acidic flux with electronics. Never, never use it with any of your modern railroading uh, equipment, okay? This is a resin flux. And what this is, it's resin is basically resin from pine trees, conifers. And it is uh, mixed with a solvent to keep it in a paste form. What flux is, and this is a rosin flux, is it will mix with oxide contaminants on metals and prevent them from interfering with the soldering process. Okay, it will allow the solder to form a good bond with the metal itself. So it's something you want to use. I always, a lot of uh, solder, like this one here that I showed you, and most solders, come with a flux already in them. Uh, and it's a resin flux, but make sure that, of that when you purchase it. The I still use this a lot because there are uh, places, like on rails and the like, where the amount of flux that's in this just never seems to be enough. So I typically will go ahead and apply a little bit of my uh, rosin flux to the joint before I uh, start to do the soldering job. And that guarantees that I'm going to get a good, clean solder uh, joint in the end. Okay, another thing, I'm going to close this so that I won't get any evaporation of the solvent here. Okay, there we go. Um, another thing that is very useful for soldering are, get this out of the way before it gets all over the place, are these heat sinks. These are little clips. They are specifically made for uh, soldering. And um, I got these from allelectronics.com. And what they do is you just attach them across on either side of a spot where you're going to make a solder joint. And then as you apply heat to the solder joint, it will draw the excess heat out, okay, and prevent your ties or anything else that you don't want to melt uh, from melting. So they're fairly inexpensive. They just clip on to the work and you can put those on either side of the spot that you're working on and they will prevent the heat from building up or spreading out from the point that you're trying to do your soldering. I recommend picking up several of these and keeping them around. They're very useful when you're uh, making joints on your track uh, between the rails and also when you're uh, adding feeders to your rails. 
The other thing that I want to show you, though, is this heat shrink tubing. I have a number of different sizes and diameters of this. And basically what it is, it's a polyolefin uh, plastic material that will shrink when it is heated. So you just cut it to length that you need to fit over a wire joint, and then you just heat it with your soldering iron. I just literally rub the heat shrink tubing with the soldering iron, and this causes it to shrink. They typically, this particular one, uh, it shrinks about 50% uh, in diameter, okay? It does not shrink in length, though, just in the diameter. I buy these from All Electronics, but um, they come in three or four foot strips. So I buy, you know, a half a dozen different diameters uh, of this, and I use it for protecting joints uh, on everything from my decoder installations to my wire buses under my layout, which are 14 and 12 gauge wire. So you can get them in, in all kinds of different sizes to protect your wire joints. Well, I hope that uh, gives you a better feeling for the types of materials and equipment that you'll need to do a good soldering job. Uh, it's not magic and it's fairly easy to do once you work with it a little while and get a feeling for uh, the melting temperature and that type of thing. So, uh, later in the week I will be coming back with another video in this series on soldering and I'll show you then how to solder to track, how to solder wires to wires, how to solder wires to circuit boards, things of that nature. So, in the meantime, again, please subscribe or click on the image over here of me that'll pop up and go ahead and subscribe uh, through that link as well. And uh, have a good week and enjoy some of the videos that are already up that you haven't uh, completely watched.